Hi, my name is Karen, and today I want to share one of my passions other than sailing. I've always been crafty. Also, I like to think through how to make things. I enjoy determining what might be needed to build an end product for a specific purpose. Several years ago, I saw these great rectangular outdoor rugs made out of rope, particularly rope used for lobster traps. This rope is often colorful and lasts forever. There are many efforts to recycle used rope, and I applaud that. However, I am using new rope, simply because I don't have a source for used rope, and I didn't want the project to take on a bigger life than it already did. This video shows me using a, lo a loom I made for the purpose of weaving rectangular rope rugs. The beginning walks you through all the steps and tools needed to make a beautiful multicolor rug. At the end of the video, I talk about the loom and how I made it. The rugs, my rugs to date have all been made of 3 8 inch pot warp rope, which is a very tough nylon rope. Okay, here we go. So here's the loom I made. And to start it out, you put about a foot or a foot and a half of um, rope hanging out the edge and then you just start weaving it back and forth. And when you first start weaving it, it, um, you know, these are all a little loose and it takes a little effort to push them down. You hold your, your rope in place at the bottom and I've noticed it's usually easy to go around four of these bars um, in the loom and then to bring the rope down. And you want it tight, but you don't want to yank it very, very tight. I, in the past, I've yanked it too tight and it causes problems with the end product. When you go around this last uh, pole at the end, uh, you just want to, again, make sure it's very tight around the outside. Um, and then you now you have the visual of uh, figure eight as you're looking down. I'll show you here. Figure eight as you're looking down on it. That can give you a good indication that you're not skipping any of the bars. It's, for, it's hard when you first start out, um, just because it, you have a long way to go down, but if you just do a visual look down and realize that the last two rows are making a figure eight, then you know that you have um, gone back and forth around, weaving around these bars uh, the way you want to. So I'll continue doing this. Um, for as long as I want to use this color, for this, for this rug that I'm making, I want it to be a two-color rug with my second color in the middle. So I'm going to make about um, 10 or 11 rows, uh, actually that's double rows, about uh, 20 or 22 rows of um, green, and then I'll add um, either orange or yellow. Whatever my mood calls for, you can hear my dog in the other room, um, in the center, and I'll show you how to hook pieces of rope together when I get to that point. So now I'm just going to speed it up so that you can see the rest of the process here. Okay, now I have ten double rows, um, you know, one in each direction uh, as I count up on these loops. I have 10 rows um, going back and forth with this color. Now I'm going to add orange. So what I'm going to be doing is taking um, an amount of rope that I'm going to cut off and I don't want to change colors right at the end because that'll, on the, on the rug, that'll make it um, rough and it, it could come off, it could break and um, and come apart easier. So I'm going to take this section here and break it apart and then I'm going to connect it to orange here. And I use my fireplace glove because the tool that I use to cut um, this rope is called a hot knife and it is incredibly hot. And I press down on, um, on the trigger here. And it heats up this bar very quickly and it cuts the rope and then um, I just sort of keep it hot and finish off the ends there so that they don't fray at all and you can see how smoky this gets. I try not to breathe it in because it's very bad stuff. 
This is a very hard nylon rope, so it um, makes a very durable rug, but it's incredibly difficult to cut. So I want these two to overlap about an inch. Um, I take the blade of this hot knife and I put it straight up and down, and then I put um, the two pieces of rope against the hot part of the knife until I see some smoke coming up and I wiggle it around and just make sure that there's some melting going on on both sides. And then I pull it up and stick it together. I'm going to hold it just for a second. It doesn't take very long at all. Uh, the plastic will end up melting onto each other. And let's see how that looks. So it's still hot so I don't I um, want to touch it too much, but it um, looks pretty good. I might actually take this piece of gunk off here um, just to make it so that it um, is not rough when we finalize the um, adding this piece back in to the rug. I'm going to continue um, holding the rope really tight and bringing this the color change forward. Um, I'm getting up to it right now. Actually not quite. So again I'm just looking to make sure that the this row that I'm doing is a figure eight um, against the row that's below it. Alright, go around the edge here. And here's the beginning of this color change. So what I want to do is make sure that this green is down against the green and the orange is up towards the next row. So I bring this around here and then I just hold it in place to make sure that um, the green will stay down um, and that the orange will go up. And this will lay much more flat once we um, take these, these bars out in a little bit and um, replace them with rope, which is what ends up weaving the rug together. So now I just continue on and what I'm going to do for this rug design, I have about 10 of these green um, double rows and then uh, what I'm going to do is do about six, um, actually probably about five rows of uh, the orange and then I'll finish it up with green on the other side. So it'll just be an orange stripe down the center of this green rug. Or teal, as it were. You can see here I'm holding it pretty tight when I pull this down. Um, I just pull all of the slack out and I make sure that these bars are all still very much in a line with one another so that as I get further up on these poles I'm not um, I'm not separating, you know, basically that the, the weave is the same going in both directions, so, you know, it's not um, flattening out in one direction and, and becoming accentuated in the other. Okay, I'm at a place again where I want to connect one color to another color. And I'm going to come back to green, and again, when I'm thinking about the, the uh, amount of rope that I want to take across, I come over here and I just make sure that I want to have this run into the green um, somewhere in the middle of the row. So I, I get a place that I'd like to cut it, and this will be a good cutting place right here. So I first cut this. Okay, so that's cut. Now I bring this in and again I want about an inch or less of overlap here. Um, heating the gun up, wiggling it back and forth a little bit so it melts both sides of the rope. When I see it smoking a little bit, I pull it out. And then I stick these two together and I'm pinching the outsides of this um, fireplace glove because the, uh, the, the plastic gets incredibly hot. So it's important to be um, very careful while you're doing this. And I just make sure the ends, both ends are tight. This one isn't actually, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat that back up between those two 
sides of that rope. I'm just wiggling it back and forth and then I'm going to push them together. So hopefully that'll stick that end together better. I'll look at it in just a second. Okay, let's see. Yeah, much better. Okay, so that's the overlap. And I have a nice hard surface down here so that, um, that I've just dedicated to cutting rope on because it gets all these um, little pieces of rope on there. Okay, so now I finish up the green. So I do another 10 rows of green. And again, one of the key things to do while you're weaving in, while you're getting in between the border between the two colors, is to make sure that the orange sit, rope sits next to the orange row and the green goes you know, sort of upward on this limb. So show you what I mean there in a moment. Oh, this is going to be quite close to the end, which is a bummer. I must have cut it off a little short. Um, yeah, so let's see. What would I do in this case? I think... Um, let me see how bad it is. Um, I think it's going to sit still inside there. So um, it's not right on the edge. Normally I wouldn't like it this close to the end uh, here. But um, I'm going to leave it for this particular case. I usually like the transitions to be somewhere in the center. But you can see here I have the green down. So I'm going to twist this rope a little bit. Uh, in hopes that I can get the orange to go down. There we go. There we go. So the orange will go down and the green will go up next to the next row of green. So there we go. Now I'll do 10 of the double rows of green. And then I'll show you the next fun part. rows of green on the top and I'm ready to take this off of the loom and I'll show you what that means in a second. Um, one of the things that I need to figure out now is I need to figure out what, how much rope do I need to cut off um, that will weave up and down through these uh, pipes. So I know I have about 20 pipes, um, 18 actually, and that each pipe is, each length is about two feet long. So then I need, you know, about 40 feet of rope and that my arm span is 5 feet. So if I measure out 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, that's about as much rope as I need. So then I use my hot gun one more time to cut this and then this is the rope that I will use to finish off the rug. So with, I'm just going to go around the edges of this and make sure that this is really finished off and there's a reason for that. I'm going to use this a lot to weave it around. So um, make sure that's all finished off nicely. Unplug my hot um, rope knife and I'm ready to go. Now the way I've built this loom, I can just lift all of this right off of here. So, and then I'll talk about the loom construction in, in a little bit, but basically this just all lifts off, and now I take this and I set it down on the floor, and I weave through each of these pipes to get um, to the finished rug, which doesn't have pipes in it, but it has rope weaving through it. Okay, so now I have my loom sitting on the floor, and I'm going to take the long end of the rope and start weaving it through one side then the other. The one thing we need to watch out for is this is that um, foot and a half, two feet of rope at the end here. There's only like um, a half an inch or maybe an inch down here, so it's we need to pay attention to this bottom row to make sure nothing falls off while we're doing this weaving. 
So um, I get to the end of the rope, and the first couple rows out, it's a long rope. Remember, it was about 40 feet, give or take. So I just take this and I put it down through this um, pipe. Pull it all the way through. Now because this is going straight from the last row and straight down into there, I'm going to loop it around this one first. Um, and what that'll do is it'll give me just a little bit of extra room to play with um, so that this corner, when I finish up this corner, it won't look like it's just ending and sliding down in there and it's all rounded off. Now the first pipe you push out is really stiff and difficult. Um, we go. So I pull this pipe out like this, tighten up the rope a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere, and um, take the pipe off this other end. So you can see I just knocked off the ending of this pipe over here, um, which isn't isn't good. We want to make sure that's sitting on top of there nicely. It'll stay a little bit better once I get the second row cruising along. So I take this pipe off of here, get the next end, and run it up in this direction. Okay, now with this tightened up down here, this pipe gets pushed out in this other direction. Pull it off, tighten up the rope a teeny bit. There's that loop at the end there. I'll just want to make sure that's nice and tight here in a moment. And that just makes it so that that corner stays nice and um, square and doesn't fall apart. So basically, I'm just going to tighten this up here and then back up on that. Okay, that's pretty good there. And then my next process goes down through this third pipe. And I just do this across the entire rug, and then there's a um, few little steps I do at the very end, and I'll show you those in a moment, but I won't talk anymore. I'll just sort of finish this up, going up and down through these pipes. in a minute. All right, last rope is pulled out. Tighten up some of the rope, some of the weaves. So one of the things that I want to do right now before I move on very far is I want to look at each of the, the weaves and see if there's anything that's too loose. Already I can see that this corner is a little loose and that some of these could be tightened up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start tightening this by going and pulling just a little bit on each of these, these ends. So I'm going to each of the loops at the end and pulling on it and just making sure it's getting tight enough but not making it um, curl up at all. So now you see these ends here, these loops are pretty loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, this extra, I'm going to weave it up in through here to tighten up these extra loops at the end, and that'll sort of finish it off nicely on this end. 
And then I'm gonna, I want another one to go down on this end, and I could have either used one extra, one less or one extra pipe on my loom to have it um, finish up at the other end, or um, have done a different row, another row, or what I can do is I can use a little bit of the slack that exists in this weave that I've just done, this tightening, and I can um, weave this rope along the top of here and then down through there. So if you get it finished and it feels lopsided, maybe it feels like you don't have quite enough green on one side or something like that, you can remedy that um, after the fact by using your extra rope and going and just making another making another rope. That one's going down through, so I want mine to be going up through, I think. Let's see what it looks like when I do that. Yeah, that's what I want it to be doing. I want it to go over this next um, rope. So I pull this tight, and then this is that other corner, so it just came out of, you know, weaving through that last pipe, and if I pull it real tight, you know, it's going to bunch that end up, and it's also going to make this other end curl up. So I have to be really careful about how tight I, I get this one end here. Um, and you want to tighten enough, but not too tight. So I think that's a good tightness there. And basically I do that across the top of all of these, these, these top loops. I'm going to go up through, because this represents two, two of the poles, one here and one here. I'm going to go up through each of these um, top loops. And that'll represent another row going across. And I can do, you know, a fair number of rows that way if I want. If for some reason I get finished and I don't like how the, the rug is turning out, um, I can always add another row on either end. The way I would add it on the other end is to just go down through that weave at the end, down through those loops and go across the other end. And um, we'll see when I get finished how it looks and whether I want to put another row across the bottom there. And probably want to really listen to what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sort of tighten up the end nicely. And these we just push it down through this whole loop. So now there will be two strands of rope going through this loop. And I've gotten as many as, um, you know, three in there before when I wanted to do an extra row on each end. It just gets harder to, harder to push through. The other nice thing about going down through here is that once this gets tighter, I don't really need to fuse this end to anything um, once I finish uh, because it won't really come out. This, you know, we've gotten this so tight now that it really won't, um, the rope won't unweave, the rug won't unweave. So we can just finish it up and have it set the way we want. So I'll cut it off right here basically and then let it slide up in there a little bit. I might hook it with some hot glue um, you know, with some uh, you know, melting of the plastic back to the other rope that's going through these loops. Um, so I'll cut that off and that'll finish that end off and then finishing this end off is just as easy as uh, sending this rope up through this end of loops and then that makes it um, this end just as tight as the other end. Um, Yep, just pushing these up through here, making sure I don't pull it too tight because it was that last, was essentially the first row we did. So I want it to be tight, but not too tight. You can always tell because the corners were, will curl up if you pull it too tight. Okay, 
So, we essentially have a finished rug. Um, so let me take you to the loom and show you what it is. Some of the considerations that I um, had when I was making the loom. So, this is the loom that allows me to make a rug um, up to, I think it's 24 um, poles long. And I got this half inch PVC, set these over this, so I, I add as many, depending on the width of the rug I want, I add as many, that one's not deciding to go in there, I add as many of these bars as I, as I want to make the loom. I just put them all across here. The last loom I made was 18 um, of these pipes, so there were some extra uh, bolts over here at the end. Um, so what I did here is I have, I, I just took these bolts, and I think they're like 10 inch bolts. I put them through a two by six with uh, a drill. I, cut a, I put a hole in the drill. I'm sorry, I put a hole in the two by six, put the, the bolts through. And these are just standing straight up. Um, and then the reason I added this extra piece of um, wood here is to give us that half inch or inch of um, difference at the end so that uh, the, the first row of rope wouldn't fall off when I lifted the whole set of pipes off this uh, loom. So um, on the underside, you can just see I ran a piece of, um, a couple pieces actually, of um, duct tape down here to hold those bolts in and I put some little feet on the uh, underside of this so it would hold onto it. Um, just because I don't want to damage the table underneath, I put a towel underneath the, the, um, the loom so that the table doesn't get damaged. Um, and this way, you know, I take these, these pipes, I just determine how, how wide I want the uh, rug. Here's a finished rug. Here are a couple other rugs I made earlier, and I appreciate your watching. Let me know if this was helpful to you.